Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to Swayam Prabha DTH 16 channel. My name is Ariba Shabbir and we are discussing English language teaching. Today we are going to cover up a new module and it is computer based instruction in second language learning. Before we go ahead, let us recapitulate of what we did in the last session. In the last session, we discussed authentic assessment where we learned that learners are given an opportunity to know what they have accomplished and what is essential for further progress and development. Besides, we talked about the performance assessment which come in the form of oral or written and also we learned that oral and written response is assessed and requires the learner to perform a task rather than selecting from the given options. We also understood the fact that through portfolio assessment instructors utilize a full-fledged opportunity for understanding the learner's progress, diagnose strengths and weaknesses and instruct them accordingly. Besides, we learned that in order to make self-assessment feasible, learners use their prior knowledge to make it more correct and also develop self-criticism of their own work. In addition, we studied that in oral reading and speaking assessment, Authentic activities that provide purposeful exchanges of information can help learners to understand and process for the purposeful speaking and reading. In addition, we understood the idea of computer based assessments and came to know that it is now available across the globe. Today, we are going to talk on computer based instruction, which plays an important role in second language teaching pedagogy. So before we go ahead, let us see what are the outcomes and what can you expect after attaining this session. After this session, you will be able to learn the conceptualization of computer based instruction. In addition, you will be able to view the historical background of computer based instruction that explores the possibilities and potentialities of computer based instruction in language learning and teaching. In addition, you will be able to understand the role of computer in varying pedagogical scenarios. Now let us go ahead. When you see up this slide, you find the number of acronyms which are displayed over here and you might have come across with uh, words like call, tell and cal. Here we will look up at how we define these terms and what concepts do they carry when it comes to language teaching and learning. So while looking up at this slide, the first word that you see is CBE. This is, a basi this is basically an acronym. It refers to computer based education you can also say it as computer based instruction and uh, this concept is a broad and it inclusive uh, it is an inclusive term that encompasses almost everything be it call cal or cml or tell cmc and so on for instance uh, you know study programming practicing of the application concepts learning from the internet using word processors to write essays, uh, designing graphics, gather and manipulate data using spreadsheets, doing statistical work. So the word based is an acronym which refers to the centralized role in language learning and teaching pedagogy. Now coming on to the second point which is CAI and CAL which we often say it as CAL and uh, here computer assisted learning or computer assisted instruction are used to refer computer learning to guide the learner through prescribed curriculum. Now when we say curriculum we mean that the materials that we use 
in the prescribed curriculum of teaching and learning and according to many scholars the number of functions that are performed by the teacher and the learner and at the same time the computer also performs a number of functions so uh, this aided and assisted are basically used to tell that it is getting into the learners as an experience or as a as something which is a part of their curriculum now the next acronym as you see in the slide refers to computer assisted language learning which is call and it is well defined in the seminal work of levy in 1997 and uh, this concept is quite widely popular when it comes to its applications because it is established term and it embraces a good range of techno centric approaches and applications to teaching and learning foreign or second languages so it may be used in virtual learning pro, uh, environment and web based online and distant uh, learning as well so it extends the use of corpora concordances and interactive boards the other acronym as you see in the slide is cml or cmi so cml refers to computer managed learning and cmi refers to computer managed instruction it is also quite popular because it refers to the managerial role of computers to guide a course of study and instruction it basically covers the uh, uh, the, the, the statistic the attendance the result form of grades or marks for future reference and it not only encourages computer human interaction but also establishes a high directive role of computer now coming on to the other acronym which is ical and its so ical stands for intelligent computer assisted learning and its stands for intelligent tutoring system these concepts are important because it has basic groundings on the theory and technique of artificial intelligence and since artificial intelligence is a recent one it is getting exponential growth in language teaching and learning so for example first building a model of what the student knows at a specific time and then providing the instructions accordingly it also provides a natural language processing which we also refer to as nlp and uh, this helps us to uh, provide a better platform for human computer interaction now coming on to the other acronym which is cmc it is computer mediated communication it is also popular as it is concerned with communication between two or more individuals it is generally used in the social sciences to cover email bulletin boards discussion list and computer based conferences to all text of uh, to audio and video based are all referring to the you know computer mediated communication and uh, it also works as a professional requirement for communications especially especially to teach and learn in room, remote locations now coming on to the next acronym which is cell and tell this is computer enhanced language learning and technology enhanced language learning cell and tell are also popular and are also in trend they were first coined by professor andrew lian in 1988 and the word enhance is used Uh, as an acronym to focus a paradigm shift from computer to technology so here computer would refer to a particular setup which is required to operate how a technology can be embraced at any point of time irrespective of uh, the availability of computer or not now coming on to the next slide let us see the concept of computer based instruction in detail so it is not a new concept in fact the entire framework 
in the academic literature has been recognized for over 70 years. And uh, if we look up at the history of the evolution of computer based instruction and computer assisted instruction, we would come to know that a number of projects were launched in order to help the learners and teachers to revise their pedagogy and include computers in their teaching. So, the first project which was included was Plato and it is also mentioned in this slide. It was referred to as programmed logic for automatic operations popularly known as Plato. Plato was the first project to have begun for instructional teaching and research. It was introduced by Professor Don Bridzer at the University of Illinois in 1960s. The Plato projects were enabled to provide interactive and self spaced instructional delivery for large number of learners. Since it was the early project, it provided a new concept to a large number of audience and one of the exciting features was that it provided talk facility. So, as mentioned in this slide, the talk facility was evolved which enabled users to connect with other participants and take up written communication. It enabled the learners to look up at other person's monitor views and read a file or message. So, as you see that the technology came into uh, the learning uh, pedagogy and it provided a number of opportunities to the learners. Not just that uh, the computer was working as a tool, but it gave the facility of talking. And when this talk facility was introduced, it gave the opportunity to monitor views and read a file or message. And it was new, it was exciting and attracting a large number of people at the same time. Now, coming on to the last point, which is mentioned over here under the term programmed logic for automatic operations, the Plato project indicated two major approaches in learning pedagogy. It brought two things. First, the paradigm where computer works as a tutor. In this session, you will get to know that how computer performs different role in different scenarios. And in the Plato project, computer came out as a tutor. It referred to something that teaches you and then it provided prefabricated instructional formats such as closed test, multiple choice questions and fill up the blanks. Learners were asked to fit the content into their respectable places. This was the first project brought into the uh, academia and it uh, provided a great opportunity to the learners. It was ultimately leading to some more research aspects. Now, coming on to the other slide, we see that there is a heading called Time Shared Interactive Computer Control Information Television, which is also known as TICCIT. This TICCIT was mainly based on the idea of television and it was came uh, after the Plato project. Basically, it was the updated version of the technology and people were improving on it. So, TICCIT brought some other aspect of language learning and teaching. So, at first what happened is that TICCIT was the project which came up with the idea of presenting text, audio, video and animation on screen. And since uh, these are the exciting features, people were amazed to know the role of technology. They could not believe that presenting text, audio and video and animation are feasible, possible in front of uh, them and therefore, they could be visible on a screen. So, TICCIT was just like a television and the system combined technology that is television technology to deliver instructions in classroom. Not only this, TICCIT brought a learner control uh, a pedagogy. Why? Because learners had the opportunity to go beyond the simple content information and include those choices that are uh, uh, that are preferable and those choices over the presentational form. So, here uh, it was not just that the computer was playing the role of tutor. However, computer was now giving the opportunity uh, to the learners to express themselves and uh, they could even prefer their uh, choices. 
special keys such as mark rule practice objective easy hard questions were included in the TICCIT project now in this project uh, there was also a concept called component display theory which came uh, with new concept and it proposed two dimensions the first dimension that it was brought uh, was that content which consists of facts and ideas methodology and essential fundamentals second performance which includes retention of the presented material its application for use and concern guidelines coming up to the next point learners were given the freedom to have a complete control over the content and examples they receive guidelines and rules uh, uh, along with illustration and examples uh, including recall, practice, feedback, all required helps uh, were included. So, TICCIT was an exciting feature of computer technology. It brought a reform uh, with regard to the use of computer based instruction in the academia and uh, it gave a lot of scope to study and research. Let us now talk about the introduction of microcomputers, which came into being after the plateau and TICCIT. So, microcomputers brought boom into the world and it provided opportunity in different ways. The introduction of microcomputers, as mentioned in this slide, brought boom in the 1980s. Language teachers were encouraged to design their own conceptualization of CBI on the microcomputers. So, language teachers were given the opportunity to design what their instruction should look like and how they can use it. So, it brought another dimension to the pedagogy. The other thing is that it was often centered on a single activity and examples included gap filling, text reconstruction, simulation, reading, vocabulary building, learning games. So, as you see a lot of uh, varieties of practicing were included in the uh, feature uh, that came with micro computers. Other software such as WordMaster, WordPerfect were also developed in the early 80s and the first generation of call was introduced as a storyboard. So, storyboard gave a different feature to micro computers and micro computers made technology easier and feasible because of the size and because of its adaptability at any place. Now, people could bring computers at their homes. They need no longer to establish a lab or a central place. It has become so feasible that people can carry computer uh, at any part of their house. So, the use of storyboard was popular in its conventional function as a reconstruction program for the microcomputer. Its aim was to reconstruct a text word by word using textual clues such as title, topic of the subject, lesson, its introductory remark and other textual clues in the text. Surprisingly, this microcomputer along with its feasibility brought different features. So, a uh, number of uh, features such as subject lesson, introductory remarks and textual clues could be displayed through microcomputers. Coming on to the next point, the program used an authoring facility. So, anybody could author the programs and this enabled the language educators to use the authoring facility within the program to write or to author their own text. Now, they could incorporate their own learning at the same time, they could bring their instructions and guide the learners. So, this was an exciting uh, thing that was brought with the microcomputers and technology was booming and it was working as a revolutionary idea. Coming on to the next slide, we see that after the introduction of microcomputers, there came ALLP and this ALLP is uh, known as Athena Language Learning Project. This was again designed to promote learning and teaching. So, the Athena Language Learning Project came in 1983 and it was a creation of communication based prototypes for beginning and intermediate courses of second language learning. So, now the courses were getting pilot through it 
and a number of varieties were included in allp and they were put in the market as a prototype the second thing is it was conceived with the latest idea of teaching with communicative approach the project brought two noteworthy initiatives what they brought first muse muse is also known as multimedia authoring environment and in muse basic structure of hypermedia and hypertext provide extensive cross referencing of audio video and graphic content so with www you can go through a number of uh, uh, websites and at the same time you can connect with the audios videos and uh, design graphic content so this muse provided a greater opportunity for creativity the second relevant step which was taken into consideration was artificial intelligence and this artificial intelligence gave a new horizon to language learning it aimed to develop natural environment for language learning so it was that uh, technology was making the learners to learn in a uh, different environment so the question was that this different environment should be natural enough and here the natural role was played by artificial intelligence so artificial intelligence uh, was providing a number of opportunities for example um, uh, exercises applications and it intelligently guess meaning intended for minimal clues and checks its understanding with the user now uh, here uh, the role of computer was different not as a tutor and not as a tool but something else what is that we will find it out later but artificial is definitely bringing a broom it is still uh, on adventure and we find a number of developments in this field in the 1990s we saw another uh, idea that was the connection of a uh, world and this connection resulted in internet which is world wide web and also known as network of networks like i mentioned in the a uh, former point this www brought a connection with a number of audios videos text animations and programs so this became popular across the globe and irrespective of time place you can search anything at any uh, place the last point as mentioned in the slide says that several brilliant scholars and computer engineers under the direction of the united states were drawn together to work on different projects so they started looking up the uh, at the other opportunities that could bring more boom in the techno world and as a result they came up with the technical foundation of the internet so this internet started booming all over and uh, they kept on including a number of features one by one after this allp there was another project which was launched and uh, this was advanced research project administration also known as arpa project so as you see in the slide the arpa project one of the successful projects because it established network and how did it establish network in it implemented the protocol suite transmission control uh, protocol with the internet protocol so a lot of technical things had started happening people now sitting at far differences could find themselves closer and this internet thing along with advanced research project administration brought new dimension established network and uh, implemented a number of features to help people uh, get connected with each other in the second point as it is mentioned over here apnet started in 1969 and it decommissioned in 1989 and during that period a number of other projects were also launched but this uh, decommissioned uh, uh, happened however in the meantime the local area network nowadays we say it as lan and wide area network we say it as wan was also evolving at a rapid pace so at first hypertext a 
a text displayed on computer system with references was introduced and it was introduced by Ted Nelson in 1965, but the hypertext then began to be interconnected with hyperlinks. So, the thing which was remained at that time is now getting connected and finding its way towards ahead. With hyperlinks to define the structure of the world wide web, it created facility for better speed to learners and teachers to use internet and share information across the globe. So, in the 21st century, we are using internet with a high speed. For some of us, 3G speed is available. For many of us, 4G speed is also available. And now there comes of the 5G speed. But let me tell you that earlier it was not that like that. Earlier the processing of the internet was quite slow. So with the emergence of the connection and the technology and the evolution of different projects, we saw that this space and the time was also falling. So it reduced the time and quickness of uh, browsing uh, information on internet. Now, after that, we saw that there was an emergence of international email tandem network. This tandem network brought uh, uh, into the world which helped the learners to discuss on the web and through email which goes to one subscriber and then gets connected to a number of people at the same time. So, Tandem Network was evolved by Helmut Bramerts in 1993 and it came popular as it works by means of discussion on the web and the conversation could now be included uh, uh, on to all subscribers on the list. Then the last one was the Camille project and this Camille project was introduced in the 1993. Its aim was to promote interactive multimedia environments. So, here text, audio, video, uh, you know, the learners could uh, listen to the content at the same time they could visualize the content as well. It played an important role in that perspective. So, Camille project aimed to promote multimedia and from here the multimedia section started. It brought a number of features for young learners as well as the old learners. The tools included information of material such as textbook, activities including simulation and games, grammar practice, exercises and audio video graphic presentation. So, as you see that multimedia is not consigned to only one media where you can just either listen or watch. However, there is an inclusivity of all the media which is now termed as multimedia and it included a variety of exercises such as simulation and grammar practice exercises in audio, video, graphical representation and so on. In 2000, we saw fast and inexpensive and portable devices that were prevailing across the world and a number of com companies were launching devices and they were bringing into uh, the world and also they were providing at a lower and uh, affordable prices. So, we saw that India was also taking the benefits of uh, computer devices just like mobile phone. Mobile is what? It is also a kind of computer system, a very small and a portable one. So, portable devices were available to provide televisual and interactive environment. So, when I say interactive environment, it means it incorporates the responses of the learner. It uh, uh, encompasses the responses of the audience and that is where the interactivity starts. So, the feature of interactivity was quite prevalent when the introduction of uh, computers small computers like mobile phones came into being. So, this 2000 uh, uh, period was quite uh, booming because of the introduction of the technology and also because of its cheaper availability. And then because it was getting incorporated in classrooms, it definitely brought a boom in it. Now, the next point as it is mentioned over here that different operation systems 
such as Android and Microsoft Windows began to use. So, this has not only increased the level of competence among learners, but also widened the dimensions for course structure and instructional methodology. This is an interesting point because it says that within the computer there came a number of operating systems and we also realized that one could use Android and the other could use Windows. So, with the introduction of Android and Microsoft Windows, we saw that there was the increase in the level of competence among learners. They could now easily access it, uh, access it and as, as well as they can find um, their uh, learning getting wider and uh, their course structure and instructional methodology were, were slightly easier than before. Now, coming on to the next slide, this is an interesting one because it tells you the role of computer in three different domains and these domains are uh, somehow traditional, but are also modern and when we combine the traditional with modern one, we see a different output and that is what computer is bringing here. So, computer is not just playing the role of somebody who is giving you instructions or providing you instructional formats or working as a teacher or working as a tool, but it is bringing a different aspect into the language learning classroom. So, first as it is mentioned in this slide is computer as tutor. When we say tutor, we mean that computer functions in the subjects and here computer is programmed by expert, somebody else is uh, programming and uh, out of that the student gets tutored by the computer existing the uh, programs. Now, computer is providing the instructional format here, computer is becoming like a teacher and giving inputs to the learner, therefore, learner becomes uh, 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 here tutee, but computer works as a tutor. Somehow it is working as teacher because it is displaying uh, movies, videos, incorporating uh, documentaries and providing instructions, guiding the learner to attain a task, giving exercises. So, tutor is also assigned to do this task. Here computer is working as tutor in order to help the learner become tutee. So, the relationship which is shared over here is the computer as teacher and student as the learner, right. Here computer is playing the central role because he is the tutor. So, it is more of guiding, it is more of taking central authority and also providing the instructions. Uh, asking the learner to see what is being put up in front of him or her. Now, the second point which is quite different from the first one, the role differs from being a tutor, it is tool. When we say tool, it means that computer functions as a tool, okay. And here it is working as something which helps the learner in different ways and how it helps by doing calculations, by doing statistical analysis, in fact word processing and you see that a number of applications are available in computer and in your mobile phones and you can use computer uh, calculation, you can use various applications to uh, let us say to edit your image or uh, to provide. Uh, graphic content and all. So, here what is happening is that computer is working as a tool, it is giving a platform to work and the tool is being considered uh, uh, here. And the tool is considered here because students can use it, uh, them to help them in a variety of subjects. So, both the roles computer as tutor and computer as tool are quite different in their approach, but Surprisingly, both the roles are played by the technological computer and uh, of course, with different methods and approaches. 
Now coming on to the last point of this slide, it says computer as duty. To use the computer as duty is to tutor the computer for that. So, it means here computer is becoming a student. For that the student or teacher doing the tutoring must learn to program to talk to the computer in a language it understands and acquiring it. So, you feed certain kind of programming in the uh, computer system and uh, this kind of programming or what you can say that when you are teaching the computer to do a task in a certain way, in that case computer becomes duty, it becomes your student and then there you become the central authority. So, here uh, the computer works as a duty which means here student uh, is being considered. Now, you have understood the three roles of the computer and uh, these three roles are popular in the language teaching pedagogy because they are giving three different dimensions, tutor, tool, uh, tool and duty. Earlier teachers were taking and students were taking these roles, but with the advancement of the computer, computer can now teach you, computer can now help you and support you while dealing a number of applications and also can become a teacher, can become a student of yours and you can even give the programming, you can give the command and computer can work according your instruction. Dear learners, let us see that what are the three important technological booms that have made difference in language learning and teaching pedagogy. So, the first one is artificial intelligence. Also known as AI. And some experts say that uh, true artificial intelligence is yet to be invented. But each generation of computers is clearly able to stimulate humans more closely. So, it is basically a computer human interaction. For language learning, computers in the near future could be able to respond creatively to learners, provide relevant feedback and hold authentic conversation with learners. So, it will be interesting to see if our view of computers turn from tool to teacher with this revolutionary change. Is not it surprising? So, let me write out the three important key terms over here. One that it brings creativity. Second, it enables feedback and the third that it holds authentic conversation or it provides authentic environment for growth and development. The second important feature that has really brought changes in the language learning and teaching pedagogy is self translating software. Now, this self translating software is software that automatically and correctly translates documents into any language. So, a number of language preferences are there. You can translate from English to Hindi language, from Hindi to uh, English language from English to Bengali and from Bengali to Urdu to Urdu to Malayalam and so on. So, this self translating software came up with the idea of giving the learners the opportunity to translate any document into their favorable language. And the examples of this technology are currently available both on web and in some software packages. There are number of applications also in the mobile phone that can be downloaded in order to get the translation done. The other important feature of translating software is 
that it is not time or place constraint. So, you can do it at any point of time and you can get it, uh, you can get its access at any place. So, with the internet there come self translating software. Another tool uh, as it is mentioned in this slide that uh, classrooms can be largely helped when it comes to software because language learners understand the nuances of translation between the first and second languages and check their language against a world. So, there is a scope of uh, looking up from the human perspective, but still a lot of problems could have been solved by translation. However, problems that have e been existing include that translation can uh, give you syntactic a representation of the language and it may lack semantic value, which means it can be uh, presenting a correct sentence, but when it comes to its meaning it may not be significant. So, uh, a guidance of a human being would be required. However, this translation work is carried out widely and um, uh, with the, uh, the help of computer as a tool, it can serve varying functions. The third important uh, point to mention over here is virtual reality. This virtual reality has also brought boom in language and educational environment. Current virtual reality applications include the ability to take a walk around a college or other site, travel through a computer, and explore the inside of molecule. So, for language learners, virtual reality environments could include such common language class settings as a grocery store, a restaurant or a public bus in which learners could explore and interact before actually leaving the classroom to experience the real world. So, this virtual environment gives you the opportunity to look up at the outer world within the computer. It is quite surprising and with the virtual uh, environment, there are a lot of other features are taking place that we will definitely take up in the next session. But uh, these three are certainly creating a difference when it comes to the planning and implementation of technology in language learning pedagogy. Now, let us come up to the conclusion. We studied the conceptualization of computer based instruction. We go, have gone through certain acronyms and we studied that how these acronyms provide a broader scope for language learning environment. So, we studied CBE and CBI which provides a broad and inclusive uh, in, uh, horizon that encompass almost everything that learners can do via computers. So, it includes uh, application concepts, learning from internet, using processors, using applications, spreadsheets, data. And when you uh, uh, go through with the computer, you can eventually decide whether the role which is being played by the computer is either tutor, tool or duty. Now, the second point as it is mentioned in the slide is plateau. So, we have also gone through the historical background of how computer based instruction evolved, how computer assisted language learning came into being. And we realized that it was not a one day thing, it was developed with time. It came out as a revolutionary concept, but with developments that took place from period to period. So, the first project which was introduced was Plato. Plato was the first project to have begun for instructional teaching and research. It came up with the exciting feature. It was the first project that was brought into the educational environment and not just it brought a number of features, but it came along with exciting applications and uh, it provided uh, the learners the opportunity to see what computers can outperform. 
and with plateau there came TICCIT which was another development of this project and this TICCIT was launched because plateau uh, uh, was uh, getting restricted in attaining certain tasks. So, this TICCIT gave a dimension of uh, looking up at the video and at the same time listening up it as well. So, the television perspective came into being and it was with TICCIT that the presentation of the text, audio, video and animation were feasible. The fourth point as it is mentioned over here says that the introduction of micro computers brought a boom in the 1980s. So, this micro computer played an effective role because this was the time when a lot of technological developments were taking place and these technological developments were helping the industry in many ways and the conceptualization of computer based instruction were getting expanded. Now, it was no more the uh, teacher who was taking uh, the central part in the classroom, but now this was quietly getting replaced by computer. So, the introduction of computers brought boom especially in the 1980s. We started the computer revolution in the early 1960s, but by the 1980s we saw that a lot of features and applications were included along with varieties. So, language teachers were now encouraged to design their own conceptualization. They were not only prescribed by what uh, things to be introduced in the, into the classroom, but they brought their own concepts. They learned authoring of the call environments and they learned to design uh, the materials uh, on computer. So, this conceptualization has certainly brought closeness uh, when it comes to the relationship between the teacher as well as the computer and the CVI which is a broad and inclusive term has brought micro computer as a reformative idea. Then with the micro computer there came ALLP project it was launched in 1983. So, this project was actually the creation of communication based prototypes for beginning and intermediate courses of second language learning. Because ALLP introduced many of the content creation uh, opportunities and uh, a lot of prototypes were introduced in the market both beginning as well as the intermediate learners were exposed to the idea of the technology by now and this inclusion took place in second language learning pedagogy as well. So, this ALLP though it came after the microcomputers launched in 1983, however brought uh, creation of communication based prototypes and a lot of experiments were taking place at that time and they were getting tested in the market and people were realizing its value, its feasibility, its size, its time, its speed and a number of other features which could make it possible. Then there came the ARPA project. This ARPA project was one of the successful projects because it was quietly popular. And it became this uh, popular because of its connection that it made from being uh, the transmission control protocol to the internet protocol. And since by the by here and by here WWW was already introduced. So, this TCP and internet protocol made the browsing easier, it made the browsing faster and it helped the learner to attain the task in a better way. A number of platforms could be browsed, a number of applications could be downloaded and therefore, this ARPA project created a boom in the industry both in the education sector and the entertainment uh, sector. Now, as you see in this slide the Camille project, this Camille project was introduced in 1993 and it promoted interactivity. Now, the shift from being computer as a teacher, as a as a, a tutor, as a tool uh, got uh, into becoming a tutee as well. Now, uh, learners were playing a central role 
and computers were taking a part where they could play the role of being a duty. You know, uh, a lot of happenings were taking place. So, Camille project provided a new scope for the learners because it promoted the interactivity. Earlier, uh, teachers used to adopt teacher centered classes. Now, with the invention of technology, computer has provided learners the opportunity to interact more and learn more. So, we can also see that computer works as a tool, tutor and duty in different functions, in different settings. This tutor tool duty is not simply the reflection of how computer has made progress, but it also tells us that there are opportunities where computer can be utilized and can be worked in different ways. So far, we studied a lot of uh, important concepts of introducing computer based instruction. We learned that how computer assisted language learning is booming in the educational market. We also understood the role of computer that is being played in different scenarios. And we should also understand the fact that this technological developments, though it has made our life easier, but it has also brought certain limitations. Uh, in the next session, when we will talk about the implication of the computer based instruction in detail, we will learn the call in more detailed way and also we will get to know the information with regard to ICT and how these two important concepts can be implemented in the language learning classroom successfully. Not just that we have to directly imply in our real life, it is just that we have to adopt certain strategies to go through with. And let me make you clear that if there is excessive use of computer technological tools by the learners and they come across with the materials that are not relevant for them, it may create extraneous cognitive load on them. And this is uh, uh, the a uh, different perspective of looking computer, but if the computer is utilized in a best way and in a responsible way, it will create a larger impact, a broader impact that will ultimately help learners to progress further and bring and make uh, learning better. So with this, we have come to an end of this session. Here are the references. In the next session, we will look up at the concept of call in detail and also we will get to know about the information and communication technology ICT which is largely implemented especially in developing and underdeveloped nations. We will take up the context of Indian scenarios and I am sure you have uh, developed a certain understanding of computer technology in the language classroom. Uh, see you in the next session. Thank you very much for joining. I am A.K. Sharma and I teach sociology at IIT Kanpur. I am going to address the question, what is the relevance of statistics in sociology? In India, there is some confusion about role of statistics in sociology and most of the students of sociology suffer from what I call phobia of statistics. But actually, if you look at history of sociology or the kind of works that are being done in sociology, which are published in prestigious academic journals, you find that there is a lot of use of statistical methods and not simple methods, very advanced methods. All of you know, as students of sociology, uh, you know that uh, one of the founding fathers of sociology, Com, or another founding father, Emile Durkheim, you know, they said that 
sociology is one subject which differs from other subjects uh, in the questions that they try to answer, but they use the same method, the method of science. And that in sociology, uh, those who believe in this kind of approach, they are called positivists, Emil Durkheim called them positivists. Uh, they, uh, they believe that uh, social issues must be studied by using observations, experiments and other modes of collection of data. Now, statistics can help sociologists in three ways. Because if sociology is about social facts or patterns, not individuals, patterns, patterns of thinking, patterns of feeling, patterns of acting, behaving and they can be measured, they can be quantified and that explanation of one social fact can be given only in terms of other facts. We need statistics because statistics can measure these facts statistics can describe these facts. So, one branch of statistics, we can call it descriptive statistics, can help us in summarizing data, in measuring facts like you are all familiar with simple statistical things like mean, mode, median or methods of dispersion, standard deviation, range, variance, these are descriptive measures. They can also be used to measure skewness or symmetry or asymmetry in the data. Other types of statistical methods which are called inferential statistics are used to test hypothesis. We know that uh, any science including sociology if we follow that positivistic tradition is about testing hypothesis using scientific methods and for testing hypothesis like for comparative purposes, comparing means of two samples or comparing variances of two samples or comparing correlation coefficients or regression coefficients, we need inferential statistics. And if you are familiar with some of them, t test, z test, chi square test, f test, these are the tests which come under inferential statistics. We use statistics for drawing inferences uh, about two or more samples. And thirdly, statistics can also be used for posing new questions. I remember that uh, a few months ago, I read an article in Population and Development Review in which uh, the authors uh, Cole and Gramajo they tried to explain homicide rates and variations in homicide rates across uh, countries in the entire world. And they found based on statistical analysis, logistic regression and all, they found that one factor which explains variations in homicides rates in the world is female education not culture, not governance so much, not even male education, but female education. Now, if facts are showing this, so you have a new sociological question, why is it that rise in female education leads to higher homicide rates? And Cole and Gramajo then gave certain hypotheses, you may not agree with those hypotheses, uh, you may conduct this study on your own or test these hypotheses given by Cole and Gramajo using statistical methods. But the point I am making that in addition to describing data, drawing inferences, uh, statistical methods can also be used for raising new questions in sociology. And of course, you are all familiar that whenever the issue of prediction comes, predicting population of India, predicting urbanization, predicting uh, per capita income of India 20 years from now, 50 years from now, uh, they are also statistical methods are of great help. And finally, statistical methods have been used in monitoring and evaluation of development policies uh, run by various governments and NGOs. Thank you very much.